Hello, welcome to Paper Crafting with Rebecca. My name is Rebecca and I love all things paper crafting. As the title would imply, I am just providing some inspiration today in case you haven't made your Easter cards yet. Although these ideas could apply to all sorts of cards besides Easter cards. But basically this is just to encourage you to shop your stash and make some fun things with what you might already have. To start with, I'm going to make a background for two cards, so I'm just leaving it on a big piece of white cardstock. And I'm using a stencil I have, but you, of course, will want to pull any stencil you've got in your stash. And that's the fun of today's video, is you don't need any particular product. Um, I am happen to be using some Distress Oxide inks on a floral swirl stencil from um, Diamond Press. And I'm just doing this on the white cardstock. Now I will go ahead and try to remember if I, if it's still available or if I know where, you know, what it is. Um, I'll go ahead and put it in my description below so that you can, you know, just to help you save searching for it if you should want some of the things that I've used today. But I'm not sponsored by anybody, not selling anything, just wanting to give you some inspiration and ideas for Easter cards. Now I'm using uh, blending brushes on this. I could have used a uh, sponge, blending sponge. I could have done, you know, any, uh, some of those new pouncers would have worked really nice with this. Um, but I'm just kind of blending in some of the inks. And the uh, blue ink is that tumbled glass, which I think is one of my very favorites. The uh, squeezed lemonade in the Distress Oxide, I think, is always so beautiful. And then the spun sugar. But again, use what you have in your stash. I've done uh, dye inks on stencils. You know, those work if that's what you've got. Um, just, you know, whatever you have. Just don't mix your brushes. If you have blending brushes, remember you want to keep your Distress Oxide inking tools separate from your dye ink inking tools because uh, they're just different formulations and it's just better for your equipment not to mix them up. Okay, and so once I have that all done, the fun part's the reveal, right? I love the reveal. <laughs> Get there we go. Isn't that pretty? That looks very Eastery to me. Okay, so I've just made my card bases by slicing a piece of eight and a half by eleven cardstock down the middle and then scoring it at five and a half because I wanted a top fold card. And then and that way I have two card bases ready to go. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim down my stenciled piece here so that I can go ahead and get them on to the card bases. Because my card base is four and a quarter wide, I'm going to trim my uh, that piece, the floral piece, down to an even four inches wide. And that way a little bit of the white of the card base will peek out around the sides. And because the card is five and a half inches from top to bottom, I will trim the uh, background to five and a quarter. And that's what I'm doing here. So it's ready to go. Four inches and five and a quarter is what those backgrounds are. And we'll get that done. But again, use any stencils that you already have. And these don't have to just be Easter cards. You know, if you have stencils that make you think of Christmas or Halloween or Mother's Day, anything like that, then grab those. Now I'm just kind of going through and matching some colors. That uh, Happy Easter ephemera happened to come from a um, Echo Park collection, Easter collection. And uh, I just used my dies to cut it down a little bit smaller. And then that way I would have the die that I could cut down on the blue paper so I could have it some matte on top of each other. And basically I just stuck all those things that I showed you on there. This one stamped on the inside, a little bit of ribbon on the bottom. Stuck the ephemera on. You may have noticed that the flowers, I took the centers off the flowers and added pearls as the centers. And really easy. Just using what I had in my stash, some ephemera, the little... Uh, tag I went ahead and put the little eyelet in and I stamped my envelope there in the corner so that it looks pretty and Eastery too 
put a little bow on that one to soften it. Okay, next is this. This is some inspiration. Um, little goodie. I make these little pocket things so they're really easy to put things into mail. Um, this is one of those uh, diamond painting egg keychains that um, you may have seen in a previous video that I made. And I just decorated up the little envelope, the little pouch, and put it inside of a card I made. It mails really nicely, nice and flat. That card is just, I just die cut three different shapes, the circle, the flowery thing, and the little stitch circle. Stacked those on top of each other, phone tape, added some baker's twine, a little bunny, uh, some little bling from, I believe that's from Dollar Tree, those little things. And so again, just shop in the stash. This is another easy one. See how flat that is? That's why I was padding that, because it's really easy to mail. If you have two pictures of anything, if you put the first one on your card base and then take the top one and just cut little strips out of it, then that will sit on top and it gives it kind of a 3D effect, but it still mails really easily. So I had those two pictures of that. I had the two pictures here of the lilacs and again did that where I just cut the strips out of the middle there of the card toppers and so that it shows and it gives it a three-dimensional look. And then the Wishing You Easter Blessings I just did with some uh, gold, princess gold heat embossing powder on white cardstock, and I, you know, did the edges of it. And here's one more where I did that technique where I took them the circle, cut out the little pieces, layered it up for dimension. Okay, now this card I am making for a toddler, so I wanted to make something that would be fun for him because you know he's not going to get he's not going to understand a keychain so with the card itself has to be the fun so this uh is a card base and the card base is eight and a half by four and a quarter because i wanted it small enough for his little hand but you can make your card base any size but i'll tell you the size i'm i'm making here the card base is eight and a half by four and a quarter and then i when you fold that in half of course you'll end up with a four and a quarter square the little uh, baby chicks are eight inches by four inch paper that I went ahead and adhered to my card base. I'm letting that dry for a minute while I cut out this little rabbit. The rabbit was just part of a uh, scrapbook paper pack and I just cut that little rabbit out. One of the things I do when I, especially with something white like that, is I will line the edges with a pen and you can either use your stamp pad and just kind of you know highlight the edges or in this case I'm using a metallic um, pen here just doing kind of give it a little bit of definition when it's on the once you glue it down it'll help that pop a little bit okay so I think that glue is dry enough so now I'm going to go ahead and score that at four and a quarter so that I can get my fold. Now remember that's going to be pretty thick because that's cardstock and a heavy paper. The little chick paper is pretty heavy or you know, even a light cardstock. So that's two layers thick already. So I'm trying to make sure it's straight before I make it permanent permanent here. And this is going to eventually be a pop-up card so I want to make sure that it's really everything secure. Plus it's getting put in the hands of a toddler. So I also have to be careful that what I'm making it, it can go in somebody's mouth and not make them sick <laughs> or choke. Okay, so my front of my card is going to be pretty simple. Let's work on the inside. That is a 6 by 6 square piece of paper or light card stock there. I'm going to score it at 3, flip it, score it at 3 inches again. So now I have it in those four pieces. Turn it over and put the corner, and I ended up having to grab my bigger scoreboard. Put the corner there, you see right there? Okay, at four and a quarter, and I'm running that down. You just need one line of that. And then I'm going to go back and fold on my score lines to make them nice and crisp. So that's my three inch score lines that I'm doing that on. getting it nice and crisp and then I'm going to go back and kind of pop up that well you know make it crisp by uh, going over it with my phone folder there or my fingers <laughs> anyway and then just kind of tuck it all in so I get that nice little square 
and just really making sure. Now my bunny that I cut out, I'm going to put him or her, him or her, right there. And again, use whichever you have in your stash. A lot of times you'll have some really cute paper with some big shapes, you know, or something that maybe was supposed to be used as a journaling card like this one, and, or, and I just pop, cut the bunny out of it. And uh, I'm going, and I'm using a really strong adhesive that I know, you know, is going to be able to take uh, the rough play that a toddler is going to give this card. Now I'm going back over my score lines if the rabbit is there because that rabbit hasn't been folded yet. So again, that four and a quarter point there, I'm going down just to make sure because I want that little rabbit to fold up nice inside the card too. making sure those ears got that bend. And that ear on the top there needs to be able to fold. So that's at the three inch marks. Now once I've got it so that it all folds really nice, the hardest part's done. <laughs> Now what I tend to do when I make these kind of pop-up cards is I take time to adhere my card base to my work table. And that's because you don't have a lot of wiggle room as far as putting in, especially for one with these measurements. You want to get that inside part very, very centered. And so I want to make sure that it fits and that I don't have it moving underneath me on my slick surface. So I tape with just some washi tape the card base down. And then again, because I know this is going to be a card that is going to be played with and not just put up on a shelf, this will be actually probably by the end of the day torn up, but <laughs> he'll have fun playing with it. Um, you know, I make sure to use a really strong and lots of adhesive to make my pop up part stay in there. Okay, so I'm getting that off of there, and that's just some of the double sided adhesive. Um, that I'm using there from scrapbook.com and I get it nice and centered using my lines there to tell me where everything is centered at. And then once I get it where I want it, because the adhesive part is still covered on the bottom, I use that little piece of mint tape just to help hold it down while I make sure all my corners are tucked just perfect and then close the card on it. Once you have that part done, it gets a lot easier because it's not going to move on you. So it's just a matter of taking off your backing on your double-sided adhesive. And fold that over, and voila, you will have a really cute voila card. <laughs> now it's just a matter of decorating it. And the, here what I did is I had a little bit of the corner pop out there, and so I just went along and made sure it was smooth on the edges. Okay, so then it's just a matter of decorating with whatever you have in your stash. What I did was I put his name using some stickers on there because I think, you know, children like to see their name. And he is absolutely crazy about the letter W right now. I use some of the stickers that I've got in my stash. <clears throat> Excuse me, I lose my voice. I got in my stash from uh, Dollar Tree a long time ago, but they're still sticking. And I like them because they have that pearlescent. Uh, luminescence to them. I used that little uh, glaze pen right there in black for the eyes. That's a black uh, glaze pen and then it looks like a white gel pen to give the little dots in the eyes because that way I don't think the rabbit has such dead looking eyes. <laughs> um, I used some glossy accents on his little nose to make it kind of pop up a little bit and I used some shimmer pen on his uh, flowers on the between his ears and on his whiskers. And that is the card. It's a lot of fun. So I hope anyway that as you watch this video today that I gave you some inspiration, some ideas for making your own cards. Maybe you haven't done a card like this before and now you see how easy it is you'll want to do it. Again, I'm not sponsored by anybody, just sharing this information. I hope you have a lot of fun and happy paper crafting. Thank you.